More than any other mammal, the dog has a highly sophisticated ability to communicate and work with us. I think all of us who have dogs know that our dogs innately understand our feelings. What that means is that we, there's mute communication between the two species. You don't have to articulate in words the way you and I have to talk about things. A dog will understand how we feel because it just picks up something about our body language. Nowhere is this more important than with service or assistance dogs. This is Artie and he's part of the foster puppy program at Dog Guides Canada. And Artie is only six weeks old and he's getting ready to go to his foster family. And he'll stay with them for about a year and then he'll return to the school for formal dog guide training. Once he comes back to the school, he'll be assessed to see which program he's needed for and then he'll learn certain skills that pertain to that program before he's paired with someone and changes their life forever. His name is Jasper and he's an eight-year-old Labrador Retriever. I am a totally blind recipient of a dog guide. Jasper is my fourth dog guide. For me, the dogs have been my sanity. They've been my stability. When you have a disability, regardless of what it is, you get very tired of asking other people to do things for you. When you've got a dog guide, you can go out and you can do whatever you want, when you want. A young boy asked me if I knew what I looked like. I had this Polaroid flash, just quickly, in my mind's eye and it went poof. I saw myself standing there, and at my side, there was a dog guide. And I'm sorry, but it's just the way it is, because they're so special, and they, they work, and they give you a life. And Jasper is my life right now. Dogs can be trained to assist people with many different disabilities, including hearing dogs that alert people to sounds. This is my dog, uh, Oyo. He's a Yorkshire Terrier. He's a teacup Yorkie. Um, he's almost eight years old, and he's a service animal. He's a hearing dog. I have a disability myself. So if somebody at the door, somebody at the phone, or a stranger comes up to me, he will come up to me and let me know that there's somebody there. I've had him since he was a baby, and he's been my best friend ever since. There are mobility assist dogs that provide help to the physically impaired. This is my, uh, my dog, Titan. I was diagnosed with multiple sclerosis back in 1990. Titan is Part of the special skills program, I, and you'll notice the SSD on his collar stands for special skills dog. So he's been trained to help uh, various things from a mobility perspective. So one of the biggest issues I had before I had Titan was reaching for things on the floor if I dropped something. And there was always a chance that I could fall out of my chair. He's a big part of the family now, so um, he's around for as long as we've got him. Last year, I said goodbye to my heart dog. It took a while to even think about letting another dog into my heart. But I had an opportunity to have a puppy. I named him Justice True, and he has grabbed my heart and run with it. My last dog loved pulling me in my wheelchair and going zoom zoom, and I really missed that. And he likes to pull me in my chair too, but one day, as a the creative being that he is, he decided that he wanted to push me. So he sticks his nose in between my shoulder blades and literally pushes me in my chair really fast. <laughs> and he enjoys the hell out of it. <laughs> Both of us do. We can show there's lots of evidence now that we take physiological measures. The touch of a familiar and friendly dog 
It makes your breathing more regular and your heartbeat slows and muscle tension goes down and all those nasty corticosteroids, those stress hormones start to reduce. And these are the same effects that you get in some of the anti-stress types of drugs. And it also explains one of the reasons why dogs are so comforting to us. They're comforting to us because they are actually causing the physiological changes associated with stress reduction. There are dogs trained to assist children with autism. When you're dealing with autism, you need dogs that are very, very calm, very quiet, very laid back. So we, over the last 16 years, have been working towards breeding really calm, very relaxed, easygoing dogs. Tracy's powerful words explain the difference dog guide Keats has made in her son Braden's life. Once there was a sad little boy at home alone. Now there is a happy little boy giggling with laughter, enjoying birthday cake and ice cream with his friends. Once there were no words to start a conversation. Now there is a friendship that reaches far beyond words. Once there was uncertainty about everyday things. Now there is a confidence within because his buddy has his back. Once there was a family confined to the house on the weekend. Now there is a family able to go out and enjoy activities together. Once there were worries whether our son would succeed as an independent adult. Now, there is new hope as we shop for groceries without problems. Once, there was a three-hour tantrum because of the bright lights of a professional photographer. Now, there are the very first pictures of my handsome son with a smile on his face and his best friend by his side. Once, there were judgmental glares and comments. Now, there are people who see my child has an invisible disability and he doesn't have to hear how bad he is from strangers. Once, there was an unsure future. Now, there are a boy and his dog, standing tall, ready to take on this world side by side. Chester joined our family six weeks ago and he's from National Service Dogs. Max was diagnosed with autism at the age of 32 months. At the age of six, I've never really been able to go for a walk with Max because um, what he does, like many children with autism, is he bolts. With uh, Chester's vest that he wears, he has a hookup. There's a handle that Max holds onto. So the first time we went out for a walk by ourselves, he never dropped the handle once. One of the things that Max does to cope when he's frustrated or express his, his frustration is to strike out. And, you know, it's, it's, it's hard, you know, to have your child striking you. We brought Chester home and that aggression and frustration just disappeared. Do they still have outbursts? Yes. But they're fewer, they're less intense, and they, they, they die down faster. Um, many of the dogs, once they're bonded with their kids, will anticipate those anxiety levels building. And I don't really, I don't worry about Max because I know that Chester's in there. I didn't really understand what a blessing Chester would be to our family. National Service Dogs has been training dogs for individuals with post-traumatic stress disorder since 2011. We pioneered the program for training dogs for children with autism back in 1996, and we're doing the same again with our post-traumatic stress disorder dogs. These service dogs are specially trained to help individuals with PTSD. Individuals with hypervigilance can, out in a crowd, be very hyper-aware, very anxious, and the dogs help to mitigate that by keeping them calmer, by um, creating a barrier. The dogs are trained to block in front and in back and what this does is creates a larger personal space around an individual. The dogs help take some of that anxiety down because they offer that buffer zone. A lot of individuals with PTSD suffer from night terrors 
and flashbacks. So the dogs are actually providing reality affirmation. The dog being there is a calming presence, but it's also a stable presence. It's part of their team. We're dealing mostly with veterans, but we do have some individuals that are not ex-military. Surf Dog Ricochet is an inspiration. She is involved in the canine-inspired community reintegration program. She works with service members recovering from PTSD and traumatic brain injury. The goal of this program is to help patients to re-enter the community by establishing a greater sense of trust and reduced hypervigilance in public settings. Patients receive the support, encouragement, and optimism unique to canine therapy. I definitely feel that Ricochet saved my life before I met Ricochet. I was very isolated, so I became very depressed and, and suicidal. And I met Ricochet. I finally had a new sense of hope. Surf Dog Ricochet is the only known dog in the world who surfs with special needs kids and people with disabilities as an assistive aid and surface dog. She's a pro at tandem surfing. Ricochet's career started at a young age. At eight weeks old, a brave young puppy climbed onto a boogie board and never looked back. Today, she makes a difference in the lives of people from all over the world. Along with Ricochet's amazing surf therapy programs, she's also an advocate for social responsibility and being true to yourself. She supports and empowers kids who get bullied or feel misunderstood. Learn more about Internet Sensation, Fundraising Marvel, and Goodwill Ambassador Surf Dog Ricochet online. Researchers are finding that dogs can be legitimately therapeutic for those suffering from anxiety. Ashley got Ginger because she has some anxieties and uh, she would like to have a dog that would be cuddly with her and help her feel good when she's anxious. And how is she now, Ashley? She's pretty, she's pretty excellent now. This is Gussie. Gussie is a therapy dog, so we visit a long-term care home once a week for an hour. And he has a few regulars that he really enjoys seeing there. They enjoy seeing his wagging tail. He likes to jump up and sit on the bed with them. It's a nice way to spice up their day. When you're a therapy dog, you can be visiting a hospital or a long-term care home. You can be around people that are unstable, so a lot of wheelchairs, a lot of rockers. There is an actual test that you do. So they want to make sure that you are, uh, and that the dog is comfortable, maybe if there's objects around them, people punched over around them, coming closer, loud noises. They need to be very extroverted, very friendly to strangers. So they have someone in a lab coat approach you, ask to greet your dog. If the dog doesn't shy away and in fact comes towards the, the person, then it's a good sign that they're going to be a really good therapy dog. Pet therapy is just an incredible phenomenon. It's just a stress reliever, right? Playing with a dog, petting a dog, it's a great way to relax and it brings a smile to everybody's face. <laughs> I think there are many benefits to having therapy dogs come in. There are a lot of patients who feel a lot very isolated when they are in hospital, so it, it makes them feel less lonely. People have a lot of fears and dogs tend to alleviate a lot of stress. Oh, I love it. Coming to the hospital for people, I, I think it's really stimulating for healing to have the, the animals come in and be able to socialize with them and just the loving and the animals know. Very special Boston Terrier Chopper the Biker Dog has been spreading happiness and smiles in the San Diego area from his Harley for the last four years. Chopper visits hospitals, attends charitable events, and is an avid supporter of the American military troops. Affectionate, sociable Chopper brings smiles to every face that he comes into contact with. His motto is, making a difference in life, one paw at a time. This is Bakker. Bakker is a Labradoodle and we always say he's a very, very lucky doodle. He started his career at a very, very young age. Everybody said he should be in photos, uh, magazines, ads, 
Long story short, he has an agent. He's been in every fashion ad, every magazine. He's been in movies. Started out with a website way before Facebook. And uh, his popularity just grew. That I thought therapy work would be a natural for him. There was a certification with one of the uh, therapy agencies. And without any training, I said, let me see if he'll pass. We went and he passed, no problem. So we started doing therapy work with young children in hospitals, uh, going to the ICU and just visiting back and forth and he just seemed to bring a lot of smiles. And after that we got into a reading program and they find that because the dogs are so non-judgmental uh, that the children relate to them and where they will not read to their peers or teachers, they have no problem reading with a dog. Then we got involved with, after the tragedy in Sandy Hook, we went up because they said, Bakker brings smiles. And we've met some of the most amazing people up there. Then we work with children with autism, and now we're in a program with young people who have muscular dystrophy and cerebral palsy. Over the year and a half that we've been going there now, I see a difference in the young people, and I see it in Bakker where there were no actions from people a year ago, now there's motion and little sounds and things and smiles. So to me, that's the main part. And I say he's a lucky doodle. Well, I just follow in his footsteps. So he can also use his celebrity to help out animals in need. We do a lot uh, for animal advocacy and uh, the shelters and fundraising. Now that's like the biggest part of his life. This is Scarlett and this is Sailor. They are my four-year-old pugs. They are both therapy dogs. Sailor's been a therapy dog for almost three years. He actually started his therapy dog training at 18 months. It was 12 weeks. Uh, we do a practice at a nursing home to go visit patients. We are exposed to different smells and sights and sounds. And then we are tested at the end of the 12 weeks. And then every year we're reevaluated to make sure that our dogs are maintaining the level that they need to be because sometimes the handlers don't necessarily see that their dog maybe isn't enjoying their work as much as they used to. We were always taught in our training that our dogs will pick what they like to do. My dogs love the kids. They love working with children. Allen's Angels was created so now we have probably 60 teams and we're constantly certifying new teams to go all over eastern Connecticut. After I became a therapy dog handler and team with Sailor. I decided I wanted to do reading education assistance dog work. It's also known as READ, which is a, a literacy mentorship program for children because it's been realized that dogs have such a calming inf influence on people in convalescent homes and hospitals. The program has really taken off and it has shown that children reading to dogs increase their reading skills, increase their test scores, increase their participation in school events because dogs don't judge. Just by petting a dog, the child's heart rate and blood pressure comes down. My dogs love it and I love it. I was a bookworm as a child so it was the perfect combination for a bookworm dog lover. My dogs also go to local universities and colleges during midterms and finals as stress relief and we go to schools and libraries and also to, we do events at bookstores and uh, fairs and festivals in the summertime. Click. Clack, move. Clack, clack, move. Clackety, clackety, move. When the, my dogs fall asleep, because they tend to when they relax, my dogs snore because of their mushy faces. And we're taught to tell the children, I read to my dogs every night before bedtime, and you're doing such a good job, they think it's a bedtime story. So that's why they're, that's why they're snoring. <laughs> and uh, I see the good that it does. I see kids come back to us at libraries week after week. It's rewarding to me and I get to share my dogs with, um, with the world. And that's an important thing to me. <laughs> it was really awesome reading to Sailor. This is Gizmo, the 3.5 pound wonder doglet. He's a certified therapy dog with Paws for Friendship, Inc. As a certified therapy dog, Gizmo visits numerous places in the community. He goes to hospitals, schools, rehab facilities, a dialysis clinic, 
senior care facilities, libraries, and a mentoring program. And then he's also a Pause to Read dog, which means he comes to Hartford Public Library um, for their Pause to Read program, where he allows children to read stories to him. He's a very attentive listener. A gizmo usually starts out sitting on their lap and then he eventually lays down. He's very relaxed and I think that energy sort of transfers and, um, and I think it relaxes the child too as, as the child reads to gizmo because Gizmo will never stop and say, hey, you got that word wrong, you have to redo it. And so he, he likes to listen to stories and thinks every child reads to him the best they can and that's what he appreciates. I'd like to share the joy that Gizmo has. It's nice to be able to, to share him with the world. All right, thank you. We'll see you again soon. And we've done fundraisers for veterans organizations, children's charities, pet rescues, um, anything that we see has a need in our community, we're happy to help whenever we can. And then he also has a Facebook page. Gizmo's Friends has been described as a lens through which we see good in the world. Gizzy's motto is, because we're friends, and that's exactly why he does what he does. He's the three and a half pound wonder doglet, right Giz? Gizmo actually has a girlfriend on Facebook named Zoe the Therapy Dog, and they both spread smiles and joy to the world through social media. Rescue dog Zoe had a rough beginning, but now she has her loving forever home. She volunteers at five different facilities, including hospitals, care facilities, and schools. She enjoys every minute of her work and brings happiness to those she meets. Zoe educates families on the responsibilities of owning a pet, adopting a rescue, and the importance of being a therapy dog. Lucy is a tiny rescued Yorkie who spends her days visiting hospitals, rehab centers, disaster areas, and schools. Her motto is, rescued and returning the favor. This is Lucy, Guinness World Record holder for the smallest working dog. I thought, well, maybe this is a good thing to become a therapy dog. It's great because the dogs get to socialize with each other, and they, of course, get to see the kids, and the kids get to see them. Okay, let's do another page. Many wonderful Talent Hounds community members do therapy work, including Trick Dog Hero, Smiley, Caleb, Karma, Sugar, Garp, Piranha Banana, Muttley Cyrus, Norbert, and others. They make a tremendous difference in people's lives. Log on to townhounds.ca to tell us about your dog. Well, there's a girl working there serving whiskey, beer, and wine. She got a ponytail hair and a walk that so did I. She's the cutest little baby that I ever met. She can blow a bubble gum and smoke a cigarette. And it crazy little